Well hello there everybody and welcome to today's video. In this one I'm going to be talking about 10 things Jurassic World Evolution 2 needs right away um, in terms of a free update really. Um, most of this content is already in the game or should have been in the game from the beginning. Um, let's talk about it. It's going to be fairly swift, going to get through these points really quick but a lot of these are things that I've noticed myself. A lot of these things are what other people have pointed out and I totally agree with them. So um, yeah, let's get into it. So one of the first things then is adding the campaign maps to sandbox mode and even challenge mode as well let's be honest it wouldn't be too difficult the maps already exist in the game why they're not in sandbox already i have no idea but we'll just have a quick look at some of these maps so as you may know there is actually five campaign maps uh, they are arizona washington pennsylvania and oregon um, and as you can see some of these maps are beautiful um, not only that but i mean that airport in the background i mean the, the potential for maybe a future expanded islands mod or something like that just look at how good this map is and specifically as well this map okay so this map is california um and as you can see it's quite a large map and also the the wild area is absolutely huge on this i mean why not make that a buildable area too um the size, the scale, um, it would be fairly easy, I imagine, to make these sandbox maps. Why they're not already, I don't know, but it is a major complaint that a lot of people are talking about. So, yeah, that's number one. Okay, so the next one is the dinosaur colour preview. Um, I mean, if I go on to modify genome of any dinosaur on this, um, basically you can see the skin colours there, but there's a perfect spot in the middle of the screen there where it could show you what the dinosaur looks like. A lot of the times I've picked some of these colours and it's not actually been the colours that I've picked and I've gone into the menu and checked. Some of these colours uh, shown on the picture there do not represent the colour that the dinosaur actually hatches with. Um, so, you know, it, I don't think it would take too much to have a little dinosaur preview picture there. A lot of people are asking for that too. Um, please, Frontier, make it so, you know, <laughs> it can't be that tough, really. Okay, so moving on to number three. The next one is to be able to disable all dinosaur combat in sandbox. I mean, if I go to the sandbox settings on this, um, basically, if I go to it, look, um, where is it? Herbivores are able to initiate fights turned off. But not all dinosaurs, you know, able to initiate fights or disable dinosaur combat. Also, I don't know why you can't just change dinosaur aggression to maximum. I mean, they were, they were both settings in Jurassic World Evolution 1 sandbox. So why they've been removed, I'm not really sure. And I tell you what, this is the pack that I've created for a 250 Indominus versus 250 Indoraptor Battle Royale. That video is coming very, very soon. It's already processing. Um... Basically, it makes it very tough because every single hatchery I have to pause the game to make sure as they're hatching, they're not attacking each other. It makes no sense. Why not just have an option where they can't attack each other and then when you're ready for them to start fighting, then they can. Also, if you want to mix different carnivore species, then you can do that too and they're not going to attack each other. Um, they're attacking each other all the time. You've got medical teams, you know, you're having to mess about. It's sandbox for goodness sake. Let's get it sorted, Frontier. Let's let's do it. So next up then is number four. We're still talking sandbox mode here. Um, basically, I'm not sure why, but if I was to say take a hatchery right here and I want to hatch um, something that takes a long time, let's say an Indoraptor, um, then I have to select them to incubate it, whatever. I have got a mod on um, for instant hatch and things like that. But if you haven't, I mean, it can take seven or eight minutes to launch an Indoraptor. Every dinosaur has a timer to synthesize and then to hatch. Um, there is chances of failing as well. Um, and also, I'm not sure why, but, you know, you do need your actual scientists in sandbox mode. So as soon as you load a sandbox pack, instead of being able to just put a hatchery down, and start hatching the dinosaurs the way you like um, basically you have to first of all set up all your science centers um, and then go to your staff menu start hiring staff leveling them up i mean this is this is sandbox mode there shouldn't be any of that so number four is instant hatch no scientists in sandbox mode they're not needed um, 
you know, and it is kind of a major gripe every time you set up a sandbox park that you first need to do that before you can even start, you know, hatching dinosaurs. It makes no sense at all in sandbox. Okay, then, so at number five, we have the submarine tour. Now, the lagoon is a bit of an odd one because, you know, the aviary, you can put tour tracks through it. Obviously, your normal enclosures you can, but with the lagoon, the functionality of the lagoon is pretty, pretty low. I mean, I can do... Um, this with uh, the lagoon viewing station whatever and lower the view down so underneath the water i've just hatched a few down here just to show you what is actually visible um and just look there's about 10 aquatic species in here and i can just makerly see one just like that um having a submarine tour is going to fix that issue and it will give the lagoon more functionality um, they'll be more visible as well kind of loop it round to the bits that the viewing thing can't actually see so yeah there's there's something more needs to be done with the lagoons there was highly kind of publicized leading up to the game's launch and i do feel like they're lacking a little bit don't get me wrong i love the aquatic species but the lagoons not quite doing it for me you know what i mean needs more functionality and a submarine tour is just going to fix that outright okay on to number six then, and that would be more dinosaurs. Um, don't get me wrong, I mean, the roster is pretty good. I mean, 70 um, land dinosaurs, seven um, flying reptiles, and seven, um, you know, marine reptiles. But if you actually think, there's only actually six new land dinosaurs in this game, being the Amargosaurus, Coelophysis, Cryolophosaurus, Megalosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, and... Kianzusaurus. So in reality there's only six new dinosaurs and if you just look at the new species mod list from Jurassic World Evolution 1 there's over 400 there and some of them have tens of thousands of downloads. The sky really is the limit for more species being added and I was going to include this as another number but it got superseded and that would just be reintroduced the secrets of Dr. Wu hybrids as well. I don't think that would take too much um but you know it is what it is i'm sure more dinosaurs will come out when the um when they release some kind of jurassic world dominion update at some point whenever that is sometime around dominion's release date but for now six extra dinosaurs and two of them are locked behind the deluxe edition so you know i'm just saying 70s all right i'm not moaning at the 70 that are there they are good but more is always better. And this game, I'd say, right from day one, did need more dinosaurs. Okay. On to number seven then. And straight in with this, I'm going to have to say larger maps. Um, now, I'm on this map at the moment. This is uh, Southwest USA. I'm trying not to move too quick. So as I'm recording, it kind of makes the, uh, the outlines and the icons go a bit jittery. But... Um, this is, in my opinion, the largest map you can build on. And as you can see, a lot of the area is non-buildable space. Um, the potential for a larger map is right, is right there. It shouldn't be too difficult. Now, if we just look at Jurassic World Evolution 1, the expanded island, uh, if you remember way back, if you were a follower of the channel way back then, I did the live stream series of where I just basically flattened Islapina and made a huge map made an absolutely huge map it had like um like 30 or 40 maybe 50 big enclosures in there and it took 15 like three hour long live streams to fill that park up build the enclosures it was huge probably the if you took this build area and timesed it by between five and ten that that would be the size of what was possible with mods on jurassic world evolution one it goes to show it's doable why that's not the case, I'm not sure, especially on maps like uh, San Diego. There's big open space, but it's taken up by these kind of areas like this where you can't build. You know, please give us some larger maps. You know, it's it's what was kind of advertised in the game. You know, everyone was like, is there going to be larger maps? Is there going to be larger maps? Yes, some of these are bigger than some of the maps on Jurassic World Evolution 1, but still not big enough, not for some people's ambitions on this game. Um there does need to be some kind of larger map, even if it was just a big, flat field. 
I think people would be happy because with terrain tools and things like that, you could really make something good out of that. Just give us a big map, just a big flat map, some generic scenery around the outside. You know, everyone will be happy with that. They really would. So at number eight, we have autonomy. Now, I'm going to go a little bit in depth with that one. Basically, I do like the concept of the medical teams, um, the storms, things like that. I know a lot of people don't like the storms or anything. There has to be some kind of challenge to the game. And as you can see, I've loaded up my disastrous uh, Chaos Theory Jurassic Park park safe. Um, uh, what I basically mean by that is, um, in this raptor enclosure, there used to be about six raptors. They all just kill each other all the time. Now, for the diseases that I've got researched or any of the kind of field medication, with the medical station, you should be able to enable something where in a certain vicinity, um, any dinosaur that needs to be diagnosed, they'll automatically do it. Uh, if they can heal them on the spot, they will. Having to micromanage all of that is a giant bore. It's a big turn off uh, playing the game when you're having to constantly assign everything and you go and diagnose them. It's something they can treat right away and then you, you come back to it and they've just left it there. And then the problems got worse. You're having to perform surgery, then you've got to trank them and bring them over to the medical center and that takes time. And obviously when your park's doing as bad as mine, uh, on this save particularly, uh, this is a failed save just to illustrate my point. But basically, that would be lovely. Um, also, you should be able to, with the shelters, um, any kind of dinosaur breakout or storm approaching, there should be an option to basically automatically open shelters, either on a single level or um, all the shelters. So, for example, you'd have open shelter, open all shelters, but you'd be able to have automatically open all shelters in case of an emergency. Um, not only that, but the amenities, um, I've noticed with this, to get your, your park rating up, it's all based upon how much cash you're earning. Now, if I go into the management view with this, um, basically you can see where the needs are for shelters, um, but the amenity coverage, for example. Now, as I look at this, look, it's all covered, but some of these are, are actually like losing money, weirdly enough. Profit minus, even though it's got guests. Now, what you should be able to do is um, have autonomy with the amenities as well to be able to automatically adjust the services that are being given. Do you know what I mean? So automatically close um, amenities that aren't making profit and adjust the services that they're providing. So, for example, on this, um, with the extra... Um, thing is on the config be able to automatically adjust all of them having to micromanage all of the amenities every time your enclosures change or get a new dinosaur is also a big pain because once you've got a big park like this all the amenities that you've got it's an absolute nightmare so just some level of autonomy to stop players having to micromanage everything it's one of the biggest turnoffs to the game once you've played it for a few hours especially when you start grinding challenge mode and over and over again you're getting the same ailments that your medical team just aren't dealing with shelters not opening automatically you know and a storm will just strip any profit you've made away uh, yeah, it's just absolutely crazy. More autonomy, please. That will fix a lot of gripes that people have with the campaign, the um, story, um, chaos theory modes, and challenge specifically. Challenge and chaos theory would be heavily improved, massively improved by them features. So please, Frontier, if you're listening, please add some level of autonomy to the game. Please. That's a biggie, that one. It's a biggie, and I know I've rambled on about that one, but... That one is massive, okay. So for number nine then, specifically we are talking about sandbox, but having this feature in um, the other modes as well would not necessarily be a bad thing. And that is essentially when I modify genomes in the game, I wanna be able to add negative traits. Uh, so for example, in sandbox, um, I'll use the Acrocanthosaurus as an example, right? So large appetite, 75% chance of it having that. Now, I, I am using a mod where I've got unlimited modifications um, possible, right? So I can, I can boost this all the way 100% small appetite if I so choose. But the problem is I can't change that any further into the negative from 75%. 
which is rather odd. Um, and at the same time, with the social ones, especially the social genes, um, what if I want to create a more antisocial Acrocanthosaurus? I can't actually make one because it won't let me scroll into negative. Do you understand what I mean? So adding a chance to have antisocial genes. And at the same time, you see, I, I, what if I wanted it more intolerant of other species? I, I can't boost it from 50% chance to 100%. Now, if this was a dinosaur that was at zero or in the positive, I can't actually reduce it which is a big problem for sandbox mode. You should be able to modify the genomes of the dinosaurs as you see fit. So I'm just gonna hop off my soapbox for a second, but yeah, being able to add negative traits in the gene menu is another big feature which is missing. So I really hope that gets added at some point in the future. Okay, at number 10, it is the ability to nerf the pack hunting capabilities of the Raptors, Deinonychus, Dilophosaurus and all the others that can pack hunt on the game. I mean, three Raptors here just took down this Dreadnoughtus in no time at all. I mean, look at the size of them Raptors, tiny compared to this thing. It'd be like getting pricked to death with pins, you know, to this thing. And it, it took literal seconds for that to go down. Please have the ability to nerf pack hunting or remove pack hunting altogether you know um i know that there's been a really good um balance mod for pc by um hyper i know that's come out um i've not yet used that but i mean for people who aren't on pc i know that it's been memed heavily how overpowered raptors are in this game um just don't put anything in an enclosure of a raptor that isn't a raptor because it's not going to survive uh, simple as that please nerf the pack hunting a little bit or buff the stats of the huge sauropods at very least make them harder to kill or able to fight back even they really don't fight back at all they just take it they die simple as that okay so i think that just about wraps up this video um thank you for watching everyone please let me know in the comments below any features that you think are missing from this that was missing from jurassic world evolution one any features you'd like to see especially features that should be in the game really um the ones i've listed are i strongly feel should be in the game so uh simple as that um yeah like i say thank you very much for watching uh, very soon i will be uploading the 500 dinosaur battle royale the largest youtube has seen so far on jurassic world evolution 2 so if you've not subscribed already or you've enjoyed the video you know please subscribe hit the like button as well it really helps uh in the algorithm <laughs> that everyone talks about that magical thing um other than that i hope you all have a great day i'll catch you all again very soon all the best everybody have a great day bye bye